In this video, I want to discuss the concept of perception and the role that it plays in communication. So, uh, first of all, I want to start by looking at just the process of perception and what's involved in perception. And uh, there are really four steps, and we're going to focus on the first three, but the, the four steps, and uh, I want to just lay these out quickly, and then we're going to do some uh, examples and show you how these uh, work in the real world. So, uh, the, the four stages the four of the process of perception are selection, organization, interpretation, and negotiation. So just to lay these out very simply before we get into the example, selection involves what are we going to pay attention to? What is it that we're going to focus our attention on? And especially in the contemporary world, we have, you know, myriad options of things to, to pay attention to, to look at, to listen to, to, to focus our attention on. So what is it that's going to get our attention? That's the selection process. Where are we going to focus our attention? Then we get into organization, which is where we just broadly categorize things. We see things like we see a person and we say, that's a person. I've seen a person before. I kind of know what that is. It's not a car. It's not a cow. It's not a house. That's a person. I know what that is. And just broadly categorize, you know, separate things like like human figures from animals and from inanimate objects and things like that. So we just categorize things on the most basic level. Then we get into interpretation. And interpretation is where we uh, start to vary much more as individuals. So in, in interpretation, we start to assess, you know, how do I feel about this thing that I'm seeing? And specifically about, you know, what kind of person am I seeing and how does that make me feel? Or Or if you're seeing a dog... You know, we may all see a dog coming and, and all of us would say, that's a dog. I've seen a dog before. I know what they are. And then how do you feel about that? Personally, I love dogs. So my first instinct is to go up and pet the dog and want to, you know, rub its head and rub its belly and, and give it lots of scratches and loving. Other people who've had maybe bad experiences with dogs or whatever or just don't care for dogs, their interpretation of that is going to be uh, much less enthusiastic. Their interpretation is going to be, that's a dog and I don't really care for it. I don't really want to be around it. And uh, so, how do we interpret each of these things, you know, that uh, that we're seeing? And uh, so, that's where we're going to start to see much more variation. And then you get into negotiation, where we start to try and influence others and and come to some common agreement about how we feel about these things. And so, but we're going to focus today on the first three of these. So, now that I've laid them out very simply, I just want to go through some, show you some images, and we'll show you how these things work. Um, so, first of all, take a look at this image. Just for a second here, I want you to take a look at it. What do you see? And this is one of those dual images with actually two things going on at once. You may be seeing a young girl kind of facing away from you. You can barely just kind of see her face in profile a little bit. Um, but maybe see her nose and her chin and, and uh, what most people would call a young girl from olden times. So we get that a lot. Uh, some of you may be seeing uh, an older woman, maybe wondering what I'm talking about with a young woman. You're seeing a face more in profile where you're seeing basically the whole side of her face um, and looking at it in, in traditional profile. Um, you're seeing an older woman with a big nose, maybe a hump on that nose and, and a big chin kind of tucked in and uh, just a little slit for her mouth and and uh, so uh, sometimes we get, you know, she's an old woman, she's a witch, she's whatever. So, uh, but when, when we look at this image, <clears throat> this is the perception process at work. So first of all, I'm saying, look at this image. This is selection. You're paying attention to this image. You're not paying attention to what's on the TV or what's going on around you or what, what people are doing. Um, you're paying attention to this image, and that's selection. You've selected this stimuli to focus on and pay attention to. Then organization says, that's a, that's a person. I've seen a person before. I kind of know what they look like. You know, it's not a cow. It's not a, again, it's not a house. It's not a car. That's a person. Um, regardless of which person you're seeing, you're basically seeing a human form there. And that's sort of the organization. We broadly categorize things. And then in interpretation, we start to say things like, that's a young woman or that's an old woman. And that old woman looks evil. She looks like a witch or she looks like she's, you know, from olden times or whatever. We don't really know these things, but this is our interpretation. These are things that we're implanting based on our past experiences and, and understanding of these things. And, and so we start to individualize a lot more. So interpretation and it all happens just like that, just that quickly. Selection, organization, interpretation all happens almost instantaneously all at once we start making these assumptions and these leaps about things so it's not like we put a lot of usually don't put a lot of intense thought into the separation of these categories they happen all at once just like that but we move through these processes of perception here very quickly so I'll give you another one here this is kind of a classic example um, i won't give you a lot of time to look at this but 
some of you are seeing uh, what, what we would call a cup or a chalice or a vase. I've heard all those types of things to describe this, this black uh, figure in the middle here that looks like a container of some sort. Uh, and others may be looking, focusing on the white space and seeing two faces kind of facing each other. Um, so, you know, again, selection says, look at this picture. Organization then says that's a that's a cup, it's a container, it's a vase of some sort, um, and tells us that. Or oh, those are faces, those are humans. I've seen humans. They're not dogs. They're not cars. They're they're human faces. And then we start to get into interpretation about what are they doing. You know, what is that cup? Is it the is it the Holy Grail? Is it the chalice? Is it is it something you know we used to take communion from, or is it you know a vase to hold flowers? Or what are those faces doing? Are they about to fight? Are they having a discussion? Are they about to kiss? You know, what's going on there? We start to interpret things individually based on that as well. So we move through these processes very quickly. Okay, so let me give you some some more practical examples here. Let's just take a look at a few pictures of, of actual people. So here we have a gentleman. Take a quick look at him. See what you think. Is it a businessman? Is it whatever? A young lady here. Uh, sometimes we hear, you know, business person, lawyer, those types of things to describe her. Uh, this gentleman. Sometimes you don't hear like accountant or, or something like that. I don't know, businessman, accountant, those types of things that, that kind of describe this person I've heard. Uh, we get this gentleman who most people look at this and, and their immediate reaction is it looks kind of homeless, pretty scraggly, pretty, you know, you know, not very well kept and, and his hair is kind of scraggly and things. And it may surprise you to find out, because I flipped through these fairly quickly, it may surprise you to find out that this is actually the same person that we saw in the very first picture here, that those two people are identical as part of a process to, to, to show how we view homeless people and how the perception can change, though, just by, you know, giving them a haircut and a little shave and putting them in some different clothes. Uh, so our perception can change um, just that quickly as well. So there, though, we had the, an example again. We moved through these process, this process very, very quickly. The process of selection, then organization, where we start to categorize, and interpretation, where we start to individualize our, our perception of those different things. And so, uh, and so we're not going to focus on negotiation today, but, uh, uh, but you can see the basic steps of the process of perception there. So what are some of the things that influence our, our perception of things? Uh, well, one is access to information. What do we know about these things? Uh, if you've never been around dogs before, it can be nerve-wracking. If you've ever seen children who haven't been around dogs and they get around them, it's intimidating for them. It's scary because it's not something they're familiar with. So whether or not you have access to this information... Uh, I had a roommate one time who was from the city and I was from the country and he came to visit me and, and so we were around uh, farm animals and which was natural to me just to jump into the pen and move cows around or move hogs around and, and things but for him that was totally foreign he was terrified of these cows because he'd never been around animals like that before he didn't have access to that kind of information and vice versa I was terrified going downtown in a huge city with him uh, even though that was natural for him it was it was different for me because I didn't have access to that information growing up in a smaller town so our access to information can affect our perception of things. Our, our physiological influences, um, things like the senses, what are our senses tell us, and, and each of us have um, heightened senses in different areas. Some of us have a better sense of smell or a better sense of hearing, and how that impacts our our, uh, our perception of things. And, and uh, so our senses will certainly affect uh, perception and tied to our physiological there. Our age will affect our perception of things, you know. Uh, I find that as I get older, music is, is often too loud. <laughs> so uh, my perception is that music sometimes is too loud as I get older. That never would have been the case when I was younger. You couldn't have turned it up loud, loud enough for me. But just our age and our, our experience of living and, and things that are, you know, our values change and things, that will affect, as we grow older, our perception of things. Our health and our fatigue certainly will affect our perception. If if you've had the flu, you've had had a cold, things like that, you know that you're less likely to pay attention. Your world shrinks a little bit during those times, doesn't it? Your only concern is, am I going to be able to hold this food down? You know, what's on reruns on TV right now? The world around you is just kind of shut out, and we're not as perceptive. We're not as focused on other people when we're not feeling well or when we're tired. Uh, our world kind of shrinks and our focus kind of shrinks uh, and our perception shrinks then accordingly as well. Our biological cycles can have an impact on perception. If you're a if you're a night owl, then in the morning you probably look like this, much like I do very first thing in the morning. You're not as perceptive in the morning. You, you miss a lot of things in the morning and, and just not be as with it in the morning. And vice versa, if you're a morning person, then at night it kind of dulls your senses a little bit, right? Dulls your perception of things. So our biological cycles will certainly impact 
uh, our perception of things. And a hunger. Obviously, if we're, if we're hunger, if we're hungry, if we have hunger going on right now, it's hard to focus on other things when we're hungry and we get a little hangry, right? That's a new expression that's now in the, de in the dictionary, I believe. So we get hangry when we're hungry and it's hard to focus on other things. And then finally, if you have some neurobehavioral challenges, things like ADD, ADHD, those will certainly impact your ability to perceive things in a certain way and, and will impact your, your perception. Other influences on perception include uh, our psychological influences, things like our mood and self-concept. Those will certainly affect our, our view of things and our perception of things. Um, some social influences, including things like sex and gender roles and how we perceive those will affect our perception. You know, should men be doing this? Should women be doing this? Uh, or, or we more, you know, have a kind of prayer mindset where, you know, sex and genders can do whatever they the other wants. And, and so anyway, so those who, uh, our perception of sex and gender roles will affect our perception of, of the world around us. Occupational roles. The classic example, I have this image up here of the woods, the classic example is if three people are walking through the woods and they all have different jobs, then they'll all see those same woods very differently. So for example, I have a brother who's a pastor and a brother who's a, a high school administrator, and I'm a communication person. So if we were the three of us walking through the woods, we would probably all be thinking about different things based on our occupation. We spend so much time in our occupation uh, as a rule, and we study it, and we, we live it. And so, um, you know, my brother's a pastor walking through the woods might be thinking about God's creation and God's beauty and things like that and how he could use that in sermon references and, and to connect with people uh, on a faith-based level. My brother, who's a high school administrator, might be thinking about you know how he could organize field trips and what kind of impact this might have on students. And as a communication person, and specifically as an organizational communication person, that's my background. I tend to think in terms of systems and how all of these these trees and, and the, the different vegetation and the plant life and animal life is all interconnected in a system and how that might be affected, you know, in, in terms of ecology. And I'm not an ecologist, but in terms of uh, systems thinking. So just as a, an example, we spend so much time in these occupations that if we were all walking through the woods, we're all going to be thinking about different things probably. So um, that's just an example of that. And then relational roles. You know, your world changes when you become a parent. If you become a parent at some point, your worldview changes and, and really, uh, you, it really does. And as you, as you, uh, as you get married, your worldview changes. And as you engage in these different friendships and relationships, what's your relationship with these people? What's your, and so those relational roles are going to impact, um, your, your perception of things as well. And then finally, culture will influence your perception. Um, so, um, so different things are going to be valued in different cultures, and so it follows that we would perceive things differently. Some common tendencies in perception, things we want to be aware of and maybe need to avoid depending on the situation. We want to avoid snap judgments. We're influenced by what we see first and what's most obvious to us, but we want to kind of reserve judgment as much as possible um, to, to get in the full picture and really take in the full uh, situation before we make any true judgments. Uh, understand that we're, we're heavily influenced by first impressions. We tend to hold on to those first impressions and, and they tend to linger and they tend to, so you may meet somebody and they're a jerk at first and, and that's going to linger even though they're really nice to you beyond that. Uh, it's going to take a long time for you to get over that idea that they're just not, uh, not a good person. So our first impressions tend to linger. We need to be aware of that and maybe be ready to question those and change those as time goes on. We tend to be more charitable to ourselves. If, you're, uh, if your study partner doesn't do well on the quiz, it's probably because they didn't study quite hard enough. If you don't do well on the quiz, it's probably because the professor's a jerk and asks bad questions, right? We tend to be more charitable to ourselves than we do to others. We're influenced by our expectations. Uh, again, we go back to the idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy and how our attitudes affect our behaviors, which can affect the outcomes. We tend to be influenced by our expectations of a situation. And we tend to be influenced by the obvious. We kind of talked about that with snap judgments, but tend to be influenced by what's right in front of us and what we see. And we also, it's a fundamental principle of communication that we tend to assume that others are like us and have the same interests and, and see things the same way, and that's not really true. So what can we do to synchronize our perceptions? Well, there's a very easy, very quick thing called a perception check. And I just want to tell you about it. It's three steps, three steps to a perception check so we can make sure we're all on the same page. One is a description of the behavior. We offer a description, not an evaluation, not saying, hey, jerk, you said you weren't going to do this, and now you are. A description of the behavior. Look, we talked last week, and you said you weren't going to do this, and now you're doing it again. That's a description. You're not calling them names. You're not evaluating. Then you give two possible interpretations of that behavior. I didn't know if you were doing this because you forgot we talked about it last week, or if you'd just chosen to ignore that. That opens up the, the realm that you're, you're willing to look at other possibilities as well. So that's important. And then just a request for clarification. Well, what's going on? 
what, what's happening here. Quick perception check can clear up a lot of this uh, in unclear situations. Whatever questions you have, feel free to email me. I'm always happy to respond to emails, so thanks.